In a previous life, I was a lawyer with a pretty successful career. I eventually became frustrated, though, because I found my practice didn't fulfill me. I suspected that I had passions that weren't being utilized. After 15 years, it was time to make a change. But to what? Should I turn my hobby of photography into a profession or do something else? I'm Karen Walrond. I believe in the power of photography and words. The practicing gratitude can make you joyful. That family is everything, and I am wildly convinced you're uncommonly beautiful. Welcome to The Karen Walling Show. What's keeping you from feeling extraordinary? Are you unfulfilled at work? Do you daydream about following your passions and making a career out of them? Well, today we're going to talk about just that, making the big career leap. And joining me today to talk about this is Marla Aaron, who, like myself, follow her passions. Marla, welcome. Hi, Karen. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to have you here. And I'm really, really excited about getting into your story because I can so relate to it. You went from a corporate world, right, corporate communications, to creating these amazing, wonderful things right here, these beauties. So tell me, why jewelry design? Well, I was working in corporate communications and for, tw for over 20 years, and I've always loved jewelry, always. And I've always been fascinated with industrial design and urban landscapes, like mm. bridges and trains and wow. anything like that. So somehow it just sort of all came together for me, and particularly in the design of my collection, because I wanted something to be, I wanted it to be very useful, very modern, mm. and beautiful and also an element of product design. I have always had an interest in product design so I wanted to make something totally new. For me when I was making my change I was really worried about um, making photography a job because it was a passion of mine, it's been a passion of mine and I was afraid that if I were doing it for money that all of a sudden the joy would disappear for me. That was sort of a really really big leap. So how did you start to go you know what I love this, this is my thing. What are the first steps you that you took when you finally went, you know what, I'm gonna go take the risk. I'm gonna go ahead and make this my career. Well, even before I decided to change, I had already started making things and I was making jewelry. I taught myself, you, you know, the internet is an amazing tool. <laughs> it is indeed. In that, I, I don't know if it would have been possible 10 years ago to do what I did. For example, I taught myself how to solder by using YouTube videos. Oh my gosh, and, really? It, uh, yeah. It seems like a dangerous thing to do just from At YouTube. At my kitchen table. Wow. So just using YouTube videos for that and just resourcing a ton of information online, I began doing this on my own at night when I was done working and done, you know, taking care of my family. And little by little, it, it, I realized I can build a collection. This is something I want to do. And the more I did it, the more I loved doing it. And the more ideas that I had and the more designs I wanted to develop. It was sort of a constant wow stream of wanting to do more. It right. didn't change it. It made me more passionate about it. That's, you know, I find that really interesting that you use the internet as your tool to kind of make your first steps because I actually almost did the opposite. Like I actually went offline and I started doing a lot of journaling, a lot of writing and a lot of introspection um, in my journals, just writing two pages a day, every day, no matter what, just to kind of get to what it was that I really love to do. And in fact, that's actually something that I'd like to share with you. In addition to journaling, I created a love list. And a love list is simply a list of everything you love to do. When I made mine, I listed everything from writing an airtight contract to playing with glue on my hand and peeling it off. Once I had this list of everything, from serious to silly, it was easy to see patterns emerge. And it turns out for me, for the most part, I love three things, speaking, writing, and shooting. I call these my light words, and I made a commitment to myself to do these three things as much as I possibly could. I have to say, what the experience has taught me is that making a career change from one thing to another requires a certain amount of fearlessness, I think. And for me, I'm one of those rip the band-aid off kind of people. I just went whole hog, right full force for it. But you were a little more cautious, is that right? That is correct. I was doing this on the side for about eight years. And, and you were selling the pieces slowly? I, I was selling pieces slowly. Okay. I, was, I was in a couple of boutiques. Nice. I was in an art show, but I was still working my full-time job. Wow. So I, yes, I was cautious because I have a family and I, you know, wanted to make sure that I, it was something I could do. Right. And the feedback was so positive that I really decided 
that I, I had to do it. If I didn't do it now, I would never do it. And so how long have you been doing it full time? Almost a year. Wow, so this is actually really pretty new. It is pretty new. Are you facing any challenges at all? There are all kinds of challenges. First of all, just the very basic challenge of you know, when you're working in a corporate world, you go to an office every day yep. and you go to work and you kind of leave your home away. You leave your home and, and then you come home to your home. Right. But it's completely different when you're working from your home and it's all there. Exactly. And suddenly, you know, I'm faced with doing, you know, chores that I didn't really do at home because I was working all the time outside of the home. So I'm learning how to manage my schedule in a new way and that's challenging and learning how to do everything in a business where before I was just responsible for one piece of a very large business. Right, and you know, I found that one of the things that I had was I didn't have a beginning and an end time for my day anymore. Like, I, there was a day time I had to leave the office. But when you're at home, well, sometimes you're gonna end up doing a chore in the middle of the day, and it means that later at night you're gonna actually be back at the office. I mean, that was one of the biggest challenges for me as well. So now that you've been doing it, you're in it, like, you're managing all of this, you're learning how to do all of this, was it worth it? It was 100% worth it. From my perspective, I wouldn't change a thing. I still have my 89-year-old grandmother who still works and asks me every day, when am I going back to my, when am I going back to work? Because this isn't quite, you know, her idea of what working is. I hate to tell you this, but that's not gonna end. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time still. It's been four years, exactly right. the same. Yeah. Going to an office is working. This is some other thing. And also, it's much harder than you think. That's one thing that I would say. It's it's definitely harder than you think. Right. It takes, everything takes longer than you think it's gonna take. Yes, definitely. But that's it's true. absolutely worth it. Yeah. And it's changing me in many positive ways. Well, you do amazing, beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks. And thank you for joining us. Now, it's your turn to make a love list. Write down everything you like to do and we'll see what lights you up. Let me know how it goes in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Cafe Mom Studios on YouTube to catch more episodes of The Karen Walren Show. See you next time and stay extraordinary.